Hey everyone, I'd like to do a Mandela effect about the characteristics of these people and even pets, hopefully, yes, about pets, uh, about behaviors and things that are different from my old reality to this new reality, okay? Now, you know, the thing is, the reason I want to bring this up is that somebody asked me before because I did some thinking about the different characteristics, the behaviors, and the psychology of these people versus my old reality, and I haven't done one, and that was like four months ago. And they said, can you do another one? So I'm gonna try to do a quick one um, about that, and it'll, when I say quick, it'll probably be a little long, because Kirk likes to talk a lot, you know, but anyway. So here's the thing is, so um, now keep in mind that this is the way things were for me. This is the way I observed and the way I grew up in this and the other reality. So if you disagree with those characteristics or say, well, that's wrong. Well, that's just maybe that what that's what your reality is or your perception of the way people were or your exposure to the people. OK, because this is this is real to me. And, you know, and I don't care if you have you disagree with me. This is just this is me expressing myself. So, you know, and so, uh, you know, others are going to have different uh, opinions or expressions of what we believe. So, because last time I had a couple of people said, well, that's completely wrong. You're wrong. Well, no, I'm not wrong because that's the way it was for me. And maybe it's not for you. So just like we can't say that everything's the same that in these different realities and stuff like that. So I want you to make it clear. So, I mean, you're welcome to comment and say, well, I disagree with you on that. That's fine. But I'm telling you, this is from what my experience is. And this is what I feel, and this are the facts that are t of Kirk. Okay, so, so anyway, so the first thing I want to talk about is that when I first came awake with the Mandela effect is around the fall of 2015 and 2016, which is the same that um, that the uh, brother uh, in Boise, Idaho, that same thing happened in the same exact time frame, because I didn't know he's clear over here, and I'm over in Colorado, and I'm scouring because. Uh, you mean, I mean, I told you that I, I woke to the Mandela effect even before uh, I saw anything about Berenstein Bears, uh, John F. Kennedy, six versus four. I mean, because I walked out the door one day and I said, something doesn't feel right. You know, it's kind of like it's, I knew something was wrong. I said, this ain't my earth. I said, well, what? Everything looks like the bushes are here. My house is here. Uh, everything's, you know, it's in spot. The neighbor's still there. The car, my car looks, it's got the same stuff on it. I said, but I knew something was wrong. I knew that it was not my earth, the original reality. I said, and, and it's hard to explain folks, but I mean, seriously, it was like, I, I already knew. And, and then one day I looked at the sun. I'm like, why is the sun white versus yellow? It's something, that sun's bright and hot. What's going on here? So anyway, but it, but it was even before I noticed the the physical environment around me that I noticed that the people, you know, I mean, the people changes. I went to work with my colleagues. I was reading this Kaiser Permanent Software Engineer. I said, man, they're acting a little different. I said, I can't put my finger on them. They're still being nice, kind of. But there's something different about these people. I feel like an alien. I'm like, something's something's not right with them. Kind of like you know, their behavior just slightly changed at that time. You know, I mean, was, something was off. And uh, I worked from home most of the time, so, you know, I didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with their faces and stuff anyway. But then, uh, but you know, when I went to the office uh, to do work at Kaiser Permanente, oh my goodness. I mean, I could just feel it. I mean, I feel something like, man, this is something. I want it out. I want it out. I didn't tell my mother. I didn't tell anybody. I mean, I didn't tell my mother. I thought they lost my mind because I said, man, I'm in a different world, different reality. And so anyway... Um, then I was doing some internet research. I don't know how I bumped across this. I'm like, I was just doing something. I said, you know, because I occasionally do some history stuff here and there. And all of a sudden, I saw that there were six people in the car with Kenny versus four. I said, oh, my God. I know for a fact it was four. I said, what is going on here? Have I lost my damn mind? I said, I must have lost my damn mind. I said, either that I'm on some other damn earth or I died. And I'm in some, I said, something's happened here. What's going on? I mean, I almost freaked out, folks. I'm like, so I'm scared of me, like, oh, my God. I, I said, what is happening? What? The, what somebody's lying. This can't be true. And every ding article, pull up photos. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, how is this possible? How is it that my entire life I knew this fact and now it's this fact? I said, my God, did somebody take over the Internet and change every damn photo? So anyway, we don't need to go there because we all had different experiences of that. And then I found out there was only two videos, by the way, at that time. So there was only two, and I came across one uh, that talked about exactly that one, John F. Kennedy, there was four or six, and somebody said, they said, well, they call it a, I think it's called Mandela Effect, 
They said they said there's somebody saying it's called the Mandela. They said we don't know what to call it because that was the other video it was about Nelson Mandela. There's only two videos, Nelson Mandela, then uh, John F. Kennedy. That was only two at that time. I, folks, I was a software engineer. I knew how to search Google. I knew how to search everything. Man, I was digging deep. I need. I know what's called. Uh, uh, atomic searching and stuff. I knew how Yahoo ser- uses their, designs their search engines even. So I, you know, what I mean, so I'm not trying to boast about how intelligent, intelligent, but smart I am about searching. But I knew exactly how to peel every every piece of the internet because uh, I studied how I actually design systems to uh, uh, search algorithms. Okay. Well, anyway, don't need to go on about that. Sorry about that. But um, so here's the reality. Um, and he said about the same time frame as him. So. But anyway, the reason we find that interesting is because there are some people who claim earlier, and we're not sure how that's half possible unless they came from a different reality. But beyond 2015, 2016, other than we think it's possible that their history ripped with the Mandela effect, you know what I mean? That actually occurred in 2015, the fall to early 2016, and they're ripped. Like Fiona Broom claims it has gone on for years. She's a liar, by the way. Fiona Broom, if you're listening to this, you're a liar, not the love of God. I've actually talked to her. She is not of it. So keep in mind there are Mandela effect people who are working for the beast system against us, a part of the deception, okay? Now, so where am I headed with this? Now, let's talk about the people. Sorry, because that's what this is about, not about Kirk's history and about this. So what was really interesting is that uh, the people's behavior, they're very sh- standoffish, shruggish at work, um, you know, very... Uh, you know, that self-centered is starting in there and kind of um, just gangster mentality, like the beehive mentality. You know what I mean? Like, they're like getting up against me and immediately, like, you know, all my colleagues and coworkers start getting up against me, just coming after me, right, for this stuff and that. And I actually ended up being fired as a whistleblower and uh, from, from Kaiser. It's a long story, right? But anyway, um, so here's the thing is that um, the people, uh, you know, in this reality, that I want to focus first on the way that the the males behave. Okay, no offense, you know, because I'm a male and not not trying to be gender, but these males are just weak. I mean, weak in many senses. Weak on personal thought. Weak about defending uh, their country, about their rights. They are just they're like uh, uh, just a wet dog with the tail between its legs. And I've actually talked to. Uh, you know, people on the streets that are strong, like old school, like like from our reality or something, that we were, um, <clears throat> we, we stood for our beliefs. I mean, we wouldn't get in confrontations, but you're allowed to speak your 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 rights. You know, we we'd stay on the hall and and uh, you know, in softer field, and we'd argue, hey, you're full of crap, man. You know, it's this way and that way, and nobody take offense to it even. I mean, you can talk politics, you could talk about this and that, but boy, you, you talk two seconds in front of these people, oh my God, they need to take offense to it. What do you mean, man? What are you talking about? Well, yeah, what do you mean? The politi- it's not about politics, anything. You know, anything you talk about, they immediately take defense to it, right? I mean, they're like really aggressive about it, but then at the same time, they're weak. They won't stand up for it. You know, they'll just, they'll just immediately like, you know, you just shut your damn mouth and go quiet and won't explain themselves further where they're headed, right? We were never like that. Very open-minded, right? And uh, and that's the problem we have today is that, you know, I'm talking to many veterans and and that nobody wants to stand up for the country even. He said, they'd say, oh my God, the people of this world, you know, in this country, they wouldn't lift a finger to defend us if the Russians came in. they just roll over. And we're seeing that with the uh, the COVID virus, the mask and stuff like that. So my voice is going to get shot. That they just... Whatever's done to us, you know, they just immediately, like they take the download and immediately fall into place. Like, you know, bricks in the, uh, you know, Pink Floyd bricks in the wall. It's amazing. No, you know, uh, freedom of thought, freedom of uh, even religion, freedom of anything. They will not defend, you know, they won't defend anything of their rights, right? So, and, and that's, the, and, and I have to say, ladies, it's for you too as well. Not you, but the ones out there in this world that we're in, Okay. And so that's what really, really hurt my heart is that there is nobody that has any strength, you know, to defend themselves. Somebody just fell on the back. (laughs) Okay. So um, another thing, too, is that I'm going to have to pause sometimes because I need to get my thoughts straight. Okay. So I'm going to pause here just for a moment. 
Okay, so I'm going to spin on that for a little bit about how when I first um, started researching the Mandela Effect and what was trying to happen, you know, uh, in those uh, early stages, that somebody said that we came from a freedom earth and this was control earth, okay? Now, I don't say that's true because, uh, but not necessarily, because, you know, we originally, I, I always get this backwards, Sagittarius versus the Ryan Belt, maybe some of us are different, whatever. I think it came from the Ryan Belt to Sagittarius, but, you know, 90 million light years, whatever. But on my original Earth, it was more, it had the same type of uh, stuff going on. You know, we had the same politics, but you had more freedom, freedom of speech and freedom of this. And uh, there's less control. This Earth is, my God, it's like a prison. It is a prison of mind, prison of, of everything. And also, what's strange about that is that in my old Earth, there was they, now they're claiming that the United States of America has the highest car. Uh, uh, Oh, God, not a term because I'm tired. Um, a Carson rate in the uh, world, uh, you know, where uh, prison inmates in the world. Oh, okay, that was never true in my uh, old reality. Now, um, that's what blows my mind is that it is, and they said that this is control earth because everything's being controlled. Oh, my goodness. It is true. Go talk in the corner uh, about freedom of speech, uh, anything, a topic, and boy, you can get slapped in. Jailed or yelled at in about 10 seconds, right? So this world is kind. So they said that our freedom, they said these call ours a freedom earth, this control earth. And there's stories about freedom earth exploded and we were moved to the control earth. Uh, you know, the, the, the parallel universe, all those other things. Well, anyway, I do got to agree that my earth had more freedom, way more. More you could talk on the streets, you could do whatever you wanted. Uh, no, he took offense. I mean, they just, someone would probably giggle at you even if you said things. Hey, what, you think, uh, yeah, they'd giggle at you, you know, and just keep on walking. These people turn their heads and look at you in a weird way like, really? Or somebody come attack you for talking freedom of speech. So um, so that was one thing that uh, I noticed too. I'm talking about population real quick. Now, on my earth, it was uh, five point. 2 billion people, 5.2 to 5.4. I can't remember the exact number, but I studied uh, uh, populations for some unknown reason. I always just study population growth around the world. Uh, I did. And ours was about 5.2 billion, I think. Um, this one has 7 billion, even with the projections. Um, the reason I know that is because I remember they always talked about there'd be 3.2 billion by, you know, something like either your... Uh, back in the day, it was like 1998 or 2000. They said it'd then probably be about 5.2 billion by the time of uh, where we're at today, 2020 or somewhere. Now there's 7 billion. Are you kidding me? That is that is 2 billion more people. Now, also, not only that, almost 3 billion, not only that, this world is smaller. I'm not kidding you. The earth that I was on was way larger. Not huge, but it was definitely larger, probably one half times the size of this one. This one's packed. I mean, this sucker's packed. Unfortunately, I didn't study the diameter that they claim. I know we don't go to the, the flat earth versus round earth. But this one's way smaller because I know by the travel times across Colorado, they used to do travel times, but they are different. Okay. So this earth is smaller. So we got a higher population and more density. Okay. Now, since I'm on that topic, I know I talk about people, but I want to talk about many things since I'm getting out there. Now, I was talking to the brother of Boise, Idaho. He thinks I nailed it because we're trying to figure out if there's a parallel universe or there's multiple Earths. Now, I think, I don't know for a fact, that there are actually 24 Earths or versions of Earth. And um, the reason, there is scripture kind of supports that, that there was something about the watchers or the elders that there be uh, that they were coming from different earths that they're supposed to be watching over the earth, and it, and it talks about that I guess in Revelation and some other parts that there were twenty four elders watching twenty four earths or stuff like that. So it's possible that there's some from the Sagittarius or Orion and different belts or whatever. And I can explain a little bit more of what I think is happening here. So I'm going to explain that real quick. Then now remember I do not know all the facts in this, so I'm just kind of doing what I've learned and kind of thought and using my gut from the. I don't know, Holy Spirit or what they've been coming through to me, give me knowledge. So here's what happens is we got 24 Earths possibly, 24 versions or whatever. So some of us are going to see different things. And what we're seeing is called a code merge. Now that's why I was even in the software field that we're seeing a code merge right now. Um, 
you know, and it's not that we're living in a simulation. We kind of are, but I can explain more about that later. Um, that we have these 24 versions or whatever it was, and they're merging into a main code line, okay? And now you're putting on a software engineer, so you got a picture like this tree. And what it is, is we have branches. So we'd have a tree that was growing. That would be the main storyline, okay, of a software field. We call it a storyline or whatever, right? So you have the branch, okay? And off that, we'd have these different versions. They call, they call them branches even. And so these would be the different earths from this main storyline. So they're slightly different because sometimes we had to do code fixes or feature modifications. So we'd branch what we'd branch off of what's called the trunk, the trunk of the tree. Actually, I'm sorry, the trunk, right? We'd branch off, okay, and then we'd bring it back into the main code line. We call it the main trunk again. To down the road, like up here, we'd, we'd take all these branches and put it back into the main code line to get the final software out. So sometimes we even call what's called cherry picking. We'd pick some kind of change that was on this branch. We had these developers developing on the side branch. And we'd, we'd pull a change, like one change of code, like one paragraph of the story and push it back in the trunk. Sometimes you leave that paragraph out. And then sometimes we'd bring it in and then push it back out. Oh, uh, guess what? It's called a flip-flop. So we'd bring it in and say, oh, God, it's causing a problem. Put it back. <laughs> right? We, I'm serious. This is all software, folks. If we would, it's the same thing that we're seeing that it's called. Yeah, so we, we had cherry picking where we actually go out and pick out certain changes and leave others behind. What's this? What's the warning about? Oh, okay, I'm going to have to, it's a phone call, but it's okay. I'm decline that. So anyway, um, so it's all in the software. Even. So and then we do, it's called a code merge. So we take this whole branch here and move it in. So in Mandela Effect, you might be taking these branches, these mer these uh, branches and moving in the main trunk, the main storyline. And that's where you're seeing these changes, boom, 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 right? Because your God and creators are making this trunk, they're making the story, try to make it complete and putting fixes in or change it and try to modify it for the future up here. That'd be the future release, release of the world, right? Release of the new world, right? So, um, so that's, you know, if you want to study that, you can study about code merging and stuff like that because I know not everybody's a software engineer. So, you know, so the whole story is a software, you know, it's kind of like this real is the hardware and all that, right? So you get the software to soul this and the hardware is our flesh and things like this. Now, I'm not trying to get into matrix or not in simulation because I tell people, even if we are living in a simulation, well, you know, the, your God or your you know, creator created the story and created the computer. So it doesn't really matter, right? So anyway. I just saw something really cool about these lens. Sorry, I got distracted. So anyway, so back to uh, that. So that's what we're seeing. So, you know, so and also the characters, these people could be different, right? And I want to talk about that for a minute. That if we have 24 different versions of Earth, I think you are just one soul, by the way. That these others may be copies of you on these other planets. People said those other me's, other souls. No, you're one soul because there's no way you could... You know, I know I'm one soul. I know that, you know, this is my reality. I keep moving through this. Now, other people like they were interacting with may actually be like NPCs or carbon copies, right? They're characters filling these other versions of the branch, right? So that's what's happening, right? So that's why people said, well, somebody said they saw me in another reality or another version. And I did this and that. Well, that could be possible. How do you know that person's even telling the truth? Because they're probably an NPC or version now. Uh, you know what I mean? A non-player character or soulless or things like that. Okay. So, um, so I just know that this, I'm one soul. So, you know, I don't, I don't go, go there. Right. So back to the people. So here's the thing is too, is that, um, you know, I got to be honest, like even the ladies behavior are totally different, right? Uh, no offense to you ladies. I'm not trying to be gender, this and that, need testicle males or better and that crap. Like you said, we had the me movement, the me attitude where the ladies were, um, you know, there's the men going the other way even in this world. That's one of the things I noticed immediately when the Medelfic came along is that men were tired of the, the ladies uh, digging for money, um, treating them like garbage, um, you know, just disrespecting them, having five boyfriends on the side and things like that. It was so bad that even after my former wife, she, uh, when she, uh, was, uh, when uh, she was cheating on me and divorced me, then I was looking just for the companionship of a lady, right? So I tried dating just briefly. And I went on like only two or three dates. I said, my God, these ladies are nuts. 
I mean, it's not that, it, no, I know I hadn't dated a long time, but, and, but you know, it was, they're, they're just different. I was like, God, these women, you know, these ladies, something, my goodness, they're terrible. You know, um, most of the dates, you know how long those dates lasted? 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I'm not kidding you. I'd spend like two weeks you know, I'm a Christian, I'm good this, I believe in that, and values this. And I get on a date, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I don't need to go about my personal dating story. Lasted 10 minutes before I'm like, oh, this ain't working. And um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> the ladies are different. They're different. You know, they um, they just, they don't have that wholesome love, respect, um, just making me be the best I can be kind of guy. You know what I mean? And just laughing and giggling and making me feel you in the heart. And, you know, just those things. And, uh, you know, I know the men are trash too. These men are filthy. I mean, you ought to hear the crap I hear behind their wives and, you know, oh my God, the filth. I mean, I mean, their wives heard what they're telling me. No wonder we get a mess. The males are disgusting. I mean, they, they say just the foulest crap to me. And I'm like, hey, you know, I had to correct him. Like, I don't want to hear about that crap, you know. Well, it's just a bub. You know what I mean? It's like really, you know. It's just they're so gross, man. And I, I mean, the men are just talking about the butts, this and that, and you know, it's all about sex. And I'm like, geez, man. I'm like, you know, I've told some brothers, even they're Christians, like, man, keep it to yourself, please. How can you justify it saying you're Christian and come out here being talking about negative, about uh, negative towards women? You know what I mean, right? So that's the thing I noticed that cheating was just horrifying in this world. I mean, it's bad and other, but man, it's just disgusting, right? It is horrible. It's the, it's all about sex and, you know, God, I mean, it's just terrible. So anyway, uh, so um, that was, I mean, I know I'm kind of just in general broad stuff here. Um, but one of the things I want to note, note it too, like I said, we had the MGTOW movement, men going the other way, and because they're just done. And uh, both sides, you know, and then also we had the lesbian movement. I mean, it's got way out of control. I mean, seriously, just beyond, it just blows out the door roof, right? And I saw guys with the same thing, you know, guys being gay and this and that. And, you know, I talked to some gay guys, you know, they had the same problems as uh, as even the straight guys. They're like, man, these men are terrible. You know, one guy told me, uh, I talked to him, uh, he said, you know, I'm gay, but man, he goes, I'll tell you what. He said, it's worse than uh, you guys that are straight. He said, man, they're, they're smarter. They know how to wit men because they've got that, that, that uh, female mind, but they can use the, 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 male, uh, the male aspects just to destroy you. He said, he goes, I, he goes I, I've been trying for 10 years to find a guy that treats me with any respect. He said, they're worse than, he said, they're worse than uh, trying to date a lady. And I don't know how he know that, but he's he says it's true. He said, "Man, I can't find anybody." Just he said, "I just want somebody to love." So even even the even the guys who are gay and lesbians, they are struggling in this world. They think that they found the love, and they said it's worse. I've talked to um, some of these lesbians. They said, "Oh my God!" They said the same thing. They said, "Man, it's terrible." He said, "You know, these ladies are just disgusting when I've been treated by them." So. So we have this movement towards even that more transgender stuff like that. We've seen that through Mandela effects as well. Um, <clears throat> another thing too that I notice is that um, you know we've seen an increase in self-centered hearts and things like that, and uh, very just selfish people. Now another thing too is narcissism. I told you once before in my previous video that word uh, narcissist was never. Uh, or narc was never ever. I mean, I studied every psychological book when I was get my MBA degree. I mean, I had to take all these psychology classes through all my degrees, even from master's degree. And man, there was never anything ever mentioned about being narcissism. Nope, did not exist, folks. I can tell you that for a fact. So now we have the term narcissist and empath as well. Never ever was that word empath ever used in any psychology book or any means. Never. There's no such thing as empath or narcissist. Did not exist. I can tell you that my reality did not. Because I knew uh, mainstream and also backstream um, um, uh, psychology and psychiatry never existed. Because I used to think narc, narc in our term was somebody who would report on somebody. You know, it's like a narc, like police narcissist would have been. Somebody who uh, just would report um, just narc on somebody just to report to police. Hey, they did this, right? <clears throat> so it never existed. Now, another thing too, then I'm going to have to probably cut this short because it's already 21 minutes. People are like, oh my God, Kirk, you talk forever. 
Now, let's talk about the pets, okay? And I'm going to try to come back to these people things. There's a lot more I had to add, and I, I did a terrible job tonight. So, but about the pets, this is what's here about pets. When in my time, my old earth, and um, the animals are, they were different in their behavior. What I mean by that is that a dog, or, you know, a dog never showed the compassion that these do. They're very kind and loyal and stuff like that. <clears throat> but they never, like, the things they're doing now, like smiling, and you never saw a dog smile. I could not, folks, my mother, I'm not, I'm sorry, my grandmother was a veterinarian in Montrose. And I used to have to spend a lot of time uh, after school. Uh, I'd go, to, they'd, she'd pick me up, or I'd go out to the veterinary clinic. So I had a total exposure to all the animals. I mean, seriously, growing up. I mean, I spent hours and hours for years, um, you know, playing with the cats, the dogs, all this and stuff. And I can tell you, these dogs are different, totally different. That a dog would just, you know, let you pet it, it would, you know, it'd wag its tail. But man, these dogs smile now. I mean, you kidding me? And their behavior is more loving, so much more loving than the dogs. And, uh, and it's not because of the environment in the veterinary clinic. No, it wasn't. They just, even out and about. Now, also with the people. That um, so the dogs today are more loving, caring. Okay, I'm losing my voice. I talk so much, but uh, <clears throat> but the people you would never, ever. I'm telling you, somebody argue with this. In my reality, mine. Would you ever talk to dog? It was unheard of. I'm seriously in our in our world. <laughs> they thought you're nut. They, they, you know, it's the point where they, somebody called a psychiatrist on you. Hey, he's uh, talking to his dog. You know, like a human. So, you know, he'd say things like come get food or dinner, just basics. But not this crap where people are talking constantly to a dog. I mean, here, honey, come here. You got some food? For now, I mean, sir, no. Hey, dog, there's a food. <laughs> sir, we liked animals. It had nothing, you know, it's not that we were against animals and me, me or anybody else. It's just we treated my pets just like, you know, there's an animal. Just a trained animal, you know, they're part of the family, but nothing like this world. Are you kidding me? Even people come to the veterinary clinic, like, hey, my dog's sick. They would not, you know, they wouldn't talk to the dog. They said, well, okay, let's know when he's we're, come back and pick him up. Not like today, be like, hey, honey, I'm starting to feel, can you help him out? And, honey, I'll come back and pick you up in about, you know, when they're ready for you. That would never been heard of. People have looked at you like, like you're talking to like an alien to somebody, right? They're like, what is wrong with that person? Why are they talking to the dog? They realize that dog has nothing, does not know crap of what they're talking about. Can't even speak English. So, and also, like I said, that um, we've seen a lot more people have, you know, everybody has a dog in this world. Everybody has a dang dog. It's amazing. You know, everybody has a dog in this reality. And even the ladies, they've adopted dogs in because they have a hard time with male companionship. So, um, <clears throat> so the reason I brought that up too is because now they said that, um, that gorillas, uh, some of the Mandela Effect channels say gorillas have now that they uh, slap their chest with their hands open versus a fist. And a fist is more aggressive, right? Boom, 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 boom. Versus, a, versus an open uh, chest. So your God is actually, your creator has changed that where gorillas are more, uh, I'd say more soft and tame versus, you know, the, the hard fist macho type slapping of their chests. So if your God can change the behavior of animals, like a gorilla, don't you think he's changed the behavior of dogs, and possibly cats? And he has. So, you know what I mean? And the peoples as well, because we're kind of considered an animal. You know, we're children of God. But the, the, the people have changed as well, right? Their behaviors. And we know this. So, uh, God, I had another thought. I just thought about that when I, I, it's, it was when I was thinking about this. Um, so you got this behavioral change in the animals and the people, right? And, uh, so it's getting pretty deep and I'm going to have to put a pause because something I really want important things I think about for a second. Oh, that's one more thing. Okay. <clears throat> Come all over the place. Now in 2015, 2016, when I worked the Mandela effect, churches popped up out of nowhere. Not kidding you. They are on every corner, every block. And I lived on the outskirts of small towns in Erie, Louisville. I mean, there was a church everywhere. I said, my God, where's all these churches come from? Everybody was spiritual. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong, which, which you know, the spirituality. But I was like, my God, why is everybody so spiritual? Because I wasn't spiritual at all, really. See, in my old reality, 
people were not spiritual, really. There was like maybe a few churches and actually to meet somebody at a church was rare. Oh, my God. To have any spirituality. It was rare. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I know there's some statistics even back then. They said something like only uh, God, my reality is something like, you know, 20 or 30 percent of people believed in some kind of spiritual thing. I mean, it's upside down now. It's like 70 percent of these people, even though they're they're, you know, we got they're like, you know, there's there's still a huge number. Oh, my God. And churches popped up everywhere. I mean, like, well, I didn't know that church existed. I mean, seriously, just out of nowhere. And then um, <clears throat> talked to a brother in Boise, Idaho. His name is Rolly. He said thing that he lived in Boise, Idaho his entire life. Other than he had to go to military and left for a few years here and there. But he said, my God, same thing happened to him. He goes, he goes, man, he goes, you would believe Mandel effect. He goes, the same thing as man. He goes, I was driving down the road and they said, my God, what would that church come from? He said, oh my God, there's no one there. He said, what's going on? He said, man, churches. He said, same thing. He goes, we had a church in every corner. <laughs> It was so bad that, I don't know if it's bad. I don't mean to say the term that just, is, you know, but uh, in my former wife, she go, I told her, I said, man, I think it went to another earth because I said, you wouldn't believe how many churches this place has. And I said, everybody's got some weird religion or some spiritual thing going on. And I said, it's unreal. And uh, even though she does not fall, and uh, I can go there about the Mandela effect, she's completely lost and land of, of of confusion but uh anyway she uh she goes yeah she goes it, it is that's one thing she admitted to she's like she goes yeah it's uh she goes it's it's she goes you're right there's she goes maybe there's a reason maybe you know maybe there's more sinners or something here or something. i don't know <laughs> but anyway um that i briefly got to jump on and i'm not trying to pick her out but uh it's funny because when the Mandela effect first came along she refused Everything she could to admit to it. I mean, I'd be upstairs like, hey, uh, I, I bear St. Bears now. You know, the kids we started. She goes, you and your damn conspiracy theory. She'd run, out, she'd run out of the room. She was so afraid of the Mandela effect, it blew my mind. She would not talk about it. She said it was evil. She said it was, uh, I was a conspiracy theorist. I mean, I could not get one word in before she would just either run from me or just completely... Pff, you know, just attack me saying, I'm, a, you know, it's one or the other, run in fear or attack, fear or attack. I mean, it is crazy. So she is not Mandela affected. She, um, she knew, she never was a history buff anyway. So, but I'm telling you, boy, she is, oh, she's a nightmare. Cause I mean, I don't know what's happening with her because she is so far gone that, uh, I don't even recognize her. I don't folks. I do not. I mean, she was always not not into the same tune of stuff as me. But boy, we're talking out of tune. <sighs> Woof! I'm telling you, this lady I didn't recognize. I don't recognize my brother. You know, my mother's still kind of the same person. Um, but my brothers, nah, don't recognize them. You know, they. And, okay, that's what I got to get to. I'm sorry, this is so long. And then I got to cut this off because I get I'm getting tired in my voice. And that's it's because I've been talking so much today. That's what's really interesting about this whole thing is that, see, it just slipped because I'm tired. What is interesting about that is these, uh, shoot, I'm going to have to put a pause. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's what it is. Okay. What is really interesting about these people is that um, it's kind of like they've been dumbed down or NPC'd so much that I can't get information out of them. It's amazing. Just basics, even just talking in general sense. Then I have to wrap this up and do another part tomorrow or something. Where I'm, um, now, for example, you know, you'll you'll come up to somebody like you know, like when I'm working on a construction site or something. I say, um, you know, where? So where are you from? And they'll be like real brief about it, quick. Uh, Tulsa. Oh, really? So how's Tulsa? Okay. Oh, okay. So they will not give you any in-depth information about themselves. Kind of like they're a computer algorithm, just really just trying to provide basic feeding of information. You know, you can you can ask them about movies. Hey, what'd you get? Movie, like Star Wars. It was okay. I said, what'd you think? I mean, was it a good movie? Well, you know, I don't know. When I watched it, I really wasn't paying attention. Or, well, it was so many, it was such a long time ago. But, but see, it gets so weird that 
if you ask them, they feel like they're being pressured. It's weird, like you're trying to dig to make them reveal the true person, the true soul versus an NPC or robot response. And this is important, folks, because that's why these people behave to the system, like 99% of them against us, that they're not even real. Because um, there's like, you know, I'll ask him like, like one guy uh, I was working with, he said, I said, so what'd you do before you did construction? He goes, oh, he was an older gentleman, about 58. He goes, I worked at Walmart. He goes, I was even a manager. I said, oh, you were? I said, wow. I said, you're a manager at Walmart? I said, for how many years? He, he go, why, why are you asking? I said, I don't know. I'm just curious. He goes, well, and he wouldn't answer my question. I said, well, I said, um, are you going to go work back at Walmart again? He goes, like, yeah. I'm thinking about going back as a manager someday. I said, oh, so, and then I said, you know, and I said something like, <clears throat> well, what, what, what department were you managing? Just curious. He goes, hey, man, why are you asking me all these questions about Walmart? He gets really pissy. He's like, he goes, man, what the, he goes, what's wrong with you? I'm like, well, I just tried to be nice. He's like, and he gets pissed. And I get all the time, for like, even tonight, you know, I walk into a Walmart, Caucasian guy. The reason I bring that up is because he wasn't foreign. I mean, Caucasian, just American. I said, I was in the bananas. I go, um, that song, uh, was it? <laughs> and we got no bananas. We got no bananas today. I got to my voice is shot. And that song, and we got no bananas today. And he goes, never heard it. I said, what? I said, you never heard the song? He said, never heard it. I said, I was, was going to ask your opinion on it. He said, if you liked it or not. He goes, never heard of it. Walks away. And I get that all the time. You can ask somebody, like, if they've heard the song, Somewhere with the Rainbow, which is the most heard song around the world, and they'll say, well, I never heard it. I've had that a lot. You cannot get any just human talk to talk to these people. Like, they are already zombies and robots. That they, that they can't dig. Like they, they're, and I get that all the time, even the younger ones. I'll ask them questions like, you know, the 20-year-olds about current event stuff. And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't really pay attention. Or, well, I don't know. I, get, I don't know all the time. I mean, like, hey, do you listen to, uh, like, let's say, I don't know, to some song. Well, it's some new song, right? And they're like, well, I didn't listen to it. I'm like, Really? So my point is this, have you noticed that if you ask any question, sometimes even to close friends and family, you get, you get this blank dead response. It is amazing. Just basic knowledge crap. It's like, wow. And, um, and some guy told me he saw that too. I kind of, well, about a year ago, I was listening to him and he's trying to study this NPC, uh, matrix um uh, stuff and he goes he goes man he goes i go to people and i'll ask him did you watch the truman show oh yeah what'd you think about that scene they'll say oh it's great yeah i like that part what did you think about the ending you can you tell me about it and they won't respond he said they'd be dead like well i don't know he goes what do you mean you, you, we talked to it you no know, if you said if you lead him on to the story. If you lead them in the story, they'll finish the story. But if you let them try to think on their own, he said, shit, they go nowhere. He said he did a lot of, he did it from a movie aspect. He said, I talk about God, Star 